How are you doing tonight? Let's talk to the Holy Spirit right now. The Holy Spirit of God. And just open up your heart for what God wants to do in your heart tonight. The greatest miracle that could happen. We don't seek miracles, we seek God. And as we move close and into relationship with God, the miracles will happen. The greatest of which is the salvation of our soul and our eternal life. So let's just move in close to God tonight. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into the service, into our hearts. We ask you for your anointing to come upon each and every one of us tonight. Oh, God, we pray for a move of your Holy Spirit. God, we are hungry for the supernatural anointing presence of your Holy Spirit. Tonight, Lord, may you speak faith into our hearts. And no matter what problem we might come with physically tonight, may our hearts be turned to you. May you use this night, Lord, to ignite our souls and set us on fire, to speak into our hearts, Lord, A message of faith for this final hour. Message, Lord, of power for this time such as this. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this meeting, into our hearts. Just move in a powerful way. Move in our hearts. Don't be afraid of your voices. Just talk to the Lord. Don't be afraid. Just speak out. We're Pentecostals. Tonight, just speak out. Speak to the Lord. May it be like a rushing mighty wind. May it be a thunder in heaven. May our hearts be knit together. All fear be gone. May faith be released. May the power of your Holy Spirit move upon our lives in a powerful, precious way. Oh, even now, right now, begin to speak, Lord. Hearts that have been hardened, faith that has been, that has been uh, uh, diminished, things, Lord, in our lives that have become our idols, I pray, Lord. May all idolatry be gone in the name of Jesus. Everything that has come into our lives to take The place of you, Holy Spirit, may be gone in the name of Jesus. Those things that have taken up and occupied our time and our minds that that have not brought us into relationship with you, we give those to you, Lord, tonight. May they, even if they're simple things, whatever they might be, every form of idolatry, every form of putting other things before you and in our personal relationship and in hosting the presence of your Holy Spirit. Oh, move, Lord, move in our hearts. Move in our hearts. Oh, shatam paparabahai. Ale tamakanta darabahai. He shataramafunda nanai alabago. Undo ya shoto bafarabahanda namaki tatatare. Oh, hallelujah. Undo rabafanda nanaya shatam bafaha. Inde sharabafanta makeda. Ole tamashimbata mafarabahai. Handala. And Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark chapter 16 and verses 15 and through 18. And he said to them, 
Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but those, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. And they'll place their hands on the sick and they will get well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare this word tonight. Hallelujah. We're Pentecostals. And we are characterized by miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, it, 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 here are our credentials. It says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. How many believe tonight? If you believe, you know, they say, Maxwell says, if you think you're a leader, turn around and see who's following you. Well, I would say to you tonight that these, that you're living under your potential, if when you turn around at the end of a, of a week, at the end of a, of a month, the end of a year, and, and you don't see a tapestry of supernatural experiences where the people are saved through your witness, where people are baptized in the Holy Spirit through your, through, through your ministry, where people are, are experience a miracle in their lives, where the sick will be healed and where the demon possessed will be, will, be, will be freed. This is not an old time, this isn't something for, the, for old time Pentecost. This is not old school, like I said this morning. This is the most modern thing you could do, and it doesn't have to do with internet, it doesn't have to do with artificial intelligence, it doesn't have to do with any of the things that we use today. This is way beyond that. This is, this, is, um, uh, this is the creator who has designed us as we are in relationship with him to be powerful, spirit-empowered disciples. You know, uh, we, um, we Pentecostals believe in advertising. Marketing is what we do. We market that we are not a religion by an authentic relationship with God and by the power of Pentecost demonstrated in our lives. The bigger the billboard, the bigger the, the, bigger the miracle, the bigger the, the thing that God does, the greater the, the, the message that we are, are trying to get across. Coke relies on a great marketing strategy. Their vision years ago, and I can still hear my dad's messages, many times Coke appeared in his messages, talking about how they had a marketing strategy that every single person would, would taste their product on the face of the earth. What a powerful strategy for just a drink, to be able to say that every human being has, has tried a Coke I've been in 69 countries around the world, and in each country where I've been, I've been able to, except for Nicaragua years ago when it was still under communist leadership, they didn't have any Cokes in that time. But, but every, every country I go to, I went, I went to um, Nicaragua and went on the Rio Coco. It's a, a river that is, uh, where the Mosquito Indians are, uh, monkeys and jaguars, tapers. Uh, on the, along the shore, beautiful place, but inhabited by mosquitoes. Most of you might not like mosquitoes that much. Uh, it's called the Mosquito Coast, but not spelled like a mosquito. Um, and we, got, we, we went to nine villages. First, we announced our coming with a mosquito translator by an airplane with Mike Hines and his Helio Courier airplane. And... There weren't even stores in any of those towns uh, till we got to one little town. They had a refrigerator, they had a generator, and they had Cokes. And if you told them in advance that you were gonna buy some Cokes, they'd put them in that refrigerator, tr crank up the generator, and sell cold Cokes to us. So there was like 30 of us on these dugout canoes going down. We didn't even have food. I mean, we took a, a 100 pounds of beans and a 
100 pounds of rice with us, and we'd come into a village, and, and they were having, they were having, they'd, they'd had flooding, and their crops had failed, and didn't have food, so we, we, we shared our food with the, with the, the locals, and, and um, it was unique. We started out the first day, the mosquitoes were so, they were so, I mean, they came in like a horde, right at about four o'clock. Thousands of mosquitoes. And, and we heard them coming. It looked like just a gray cloud. They said, they're coming. We go, oh my goodness. We weren't prepared for that. They'd warned us, you're going down that river, be prepared. And so I told all my team, you know, we have been granted a wonderful privilege. The privilege to be able to suffer for Jesus Christ. Others have to give their life. But we get the privilege of being bitten by a mosquito that might give us, uh, we might get dengue, we might get, um, we might get uh, malaria, we might get wh whatever diseases there on the river. And uh, so you're thinking about it. They come on you. I remember that first day I just went like that and my whole arm was red with all the mosquitoes. You, you know, if, you're, if you've ever fished in Florida, you know uh, how, how you can hold your breath and mosquitoes can't pull their little beak out and you can just trap them on your arm. And so I held my breath and, and just killed a bunch of them. And it was hopeless. They were everywhere. I told, uh, I like to joke around and say, Hey, on that trip uh, at night, it was wonderful because the mosquitoes would pick you up, fan you with their wings, and, <laughs> and swing you like a hammock, you know, as they're eating you in your sleeping bag. But it was, a, it was a hard trip, but we had one thing with us, the power of the Holy Spirit. It was, it was a, a glorious trip, so many miracles of... You know, we took a doctor with us and some meds. We took one suitcase of meds. And, and when we were done with the trip, she said, I don't know. She said, I keep a log of every med that I, that I prescribe. She said, the, the amount of medicine that I have used on this trip it, it far exceeds five suitcases full of, of meds. And we only had one. And we still have meds in, in, that, in that one. You know, I don't know why the Lord had to multiply medicine when he could have healed them all, but people were healed, people were delivered, people were, were saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit. One little girl in the last village, I remember she came up, she was an orphan. And she uh, was a deaf mute, and she was begging the orphans out there in those villages, they'll stay in a town until they kick them out, and then they go to another, orf another village. And, and uh, she was... Uh, probably about 13 or 14, maybe 14, she was healed. All the people were like scared because they'd never seen a healing. They thought we were witches or warlocks or something, you know. They didn't think of us as, <laughs> as, as being Pentecostals. And we, we, you know, we talked to them. Uh, some places a miracle is not exactly what, what we might think here because people get sick out there, they go see a witch doctor. And... Um, you know, we had to convince them. Boy, that little girl got saved. She was thrilled. The next morning, we're taken off out of that village, and she's got two left foot shoes. <laughs> Both her shoes were going in one direction. She's standing there, and, and she's, she's begging us to take her with her. You know, it's illegal to take a kid any time like that. We couldn't take her, but, uh, but it just broke our heart. I'll always have that little, little healed deaf mute girl in my mind as, as she stood on, that, on the mud there in the riverbank with her two left shoes uh, having experienced a powerful miracle in her life. You know, when you go on a, a, out there like that, you think, man, that's all I got is a miracle. That's all I got. Well, I'm telling you, when you get in your car and you drive down these snow-covered streets to go to your destination, that's all you got to. That's all you got. Don't put your faith in medicine. Don't put your faith in your, in your money. Don't put faith in what you know. You, you, all you have is all you need. It's the supernatural power, power of God to, to be and do whatever he wants you to do wherever he sends you and wherever you are. It's enough. It's better than a spare tire. It's better than, than having two tanks of gas like I have on my speed to light car. 
That way I can go into the wilderness <laughs> and, and get, no, I can get back out. <laughs> one tank in, one tank out. But you might not need uh, tanks when, you, when you're two tanks of gas like I do. But the Lord has multiplied the fuel at times. You know, at times we've just, we, there are no gas stations and you just have to pray and you watch that needle sitting there on a quarter of a tank and you just watch it just stay there as you travel 700 kilometers and watch that thing just not move. My mother-in-law was that way. She is a woman of faith. And my father-in-law left her after 25 years of marriage with four kids. And uh, she didn't have a job. She had four kids. And she went to church every Wednesday and every Sunday morning and every Sunday night. And it was clear across Miami and from Hialeah all the way uh, over to Miami, North Miami Beach. And uh, she'd just pray, get in that car and drive those kids to church. And then come back. And she didn't drive the car to go anywhere else. But next time church was open, she didn't stay because she didn't have gas just because her needle was on empty. There's a, a lot of people that have that kind of need, financial need or, or physical needs that have to depend on, on God to do the miracle. You know, our, our problem is, you know, someone, a lot of teams come to El Salvador and, and, and I hear this often. They say, oh... We don't need God in America. We have this, we have that. We don't really need God. Then they get real mad when I look at them in the eye and I say, okay, I'm going to pray you lose everything you got. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> You're that close to needing it. You know, why have an idol? Why have a crutch? When we don't need God, then we have something else that's not important that has taken his place. And we, you know, when you're, when you're laying there having a heart attack, you're laying there with, your, with renal failure, with your kidneys shot, when you're laying there with cancer, you suddenly need God. You need Him when you're feeling great, too. You need Him. You don't know you need Him, but, but you need Him. And every time you try and, and put something else in His place, that's idolatry. You know... We want to market Jesus, to make Jesus famous to the next generation. And um, our product is Jesus. My dad, I said it this morning, I'll repeat it. He said, he says, if Jesus died for everyone, then everyone needs to know that. And that's our, that's our marketing strategy. And the plan that the Holy Spirit gave us was to empower us to be able to do the miracles, signs, and wonders so that people would believe and would be saved. When, when your friends see you do a miracle, that makes a difference. Believer, when did you do your last miraculous sign? After Pentecost, Peter and John, they had an opportunity. Here they are at the gate called Beautiful. A beggar comes up. Now they have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but as far as we know, this is their first miracle. And as, as that guy comes up, the first thing, when they see him asking for money, they say, look at us. I'm thinking... These are two disciples that have been unemployed for three and a half years. Their clothes must have looked ragged. And maybe, uh, maybe they looked unkempt. I don't know why. But they were saying, look at us. We don't have any money. Look at us. We're just a notch above you. You got nothing. We got nothing. But what I have, I said, is a miracle. And then when... When they were, when they were had done the miracle without silver or gold, they asked that rhetorical question, why does the miracle surprise you? A miracle settles the debate. Jesus is the real thing. Jesus is the one who does the miracle, but he won't do it without us. Jesus is the one who gives, gives us the faith. He's the one 
who, who will do the miracle through us. But, but our Pentecostal DNA teaches us that we don't look around for some missionary to come in from El Salvador to do our miracles for us. We don't need to call in Benny Hinn to do our miracles for us. We don't need to call in any uh, miracle-working personality to do our miracles for us. Because if we're believers and if we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, activated in the gifts, these miraculous signs should be following us. They are the proof. Just like a Coke tastes like a Coke in the whole, in the, on the whole planet, a Pentecostal believer should look like a Pentecostal believer everywhere we go. I was at general council this year. Once in a while they let me go, not very often in 30 years. But because I don't hardly come back to the States. But my son-in-law, he had had a conversation with his little girl. And Allie had said he had had a stiff neck for a week. He just couldn't move his neck. And Allie said, Dad, have you ever seen a miracle? She said, yeah, I've seen plenty of miracles. Have you ever had one? He said, no, I've never had a miracle. Justin had had to watch his dad die slowly of a brain tumor. A fine, uh, a fine, uh, he'd been a, a lawyer, he'd been a, he'd been a preacher, he'd been a police officer. But affected him to think that God could heal him. And he said, honey, no, I've never been healed. I've seen a lot of people, but I've never been healed. So we're standing in line to go into a restaurant. And he's like this. And I said, I just reached out my hand. And I laid it on his shoulder. And I just commanded that pain to be gone. He looked over at me because he couldn't move his head. He looked at me. He bowed his head. <laughs> and then he realized he was healed. And he's going nuts. He got on the phone. He called his mom and said, Mom, they're missionaries in Indonesia. Mom, I'm healed. He, he told Ali, I, now I've had my miracle. I'm healed. He called up all, the, you know, uh, all of his friends. He said, I wasn't going to be able to play basketball with you guys, but I, I'm, I, I'm, I've been healed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, be on the team. And he, he was, uh, he was uh, excited about what God had done. And I was excited that I could activate his faith as a father-in-law. I thought, that was, that's, I'm your father-in-law. <laughs> I prayed that prayer of faith. If I hadn't prayed, he'd still be sick, you know? My other son-in-law, Steve, his dad died. He was a pastor, and he died. And Steve had dozens of, of, um, of kidney stones. He was in so much pain. He was on medication. And I had to go preach at a faith assembly in, in Orlando. And, and, and I said, uh, Steve, you want to go? He said, yeah, I'll go. I'll take my meds. If I get sick, though, I'm going to the car. And so I took him. We went to the service, and power of God hit. We had a, a great service. And, and we get back, and we didn't go out to eat with the pastor that night, so we went to Taco Bell, you know. If we go to the pastors, we'll go to a, a fancy restaurant, but uh, Taco Bell is good enough for a missionary. And uh, we're, we're eating some tacos. We're getting ready to order. And he says, oh, oh, the pain's coming on. I said, dear Jesus, bless this food and heal Steve right now in the name of Jesus. It's practical. It's not like this great big service. And immediately he said he felt like Alka-Seltzer's. Every one of those kidney stones dissolved in him. And he was... And he had never had kidney stones since. And it was just the power of God. And I got through my other son-in-law whose father died. I got some points with him because I got to heal him. You say, well, God heals it. Don't make it so, don't try and make it sound so like, oh, the Lord heals and he's the one. No, if you don't pray, how many people have not been healed because you didn't pray? It doesn't take long. 
I go to the hospital. I had a great big guy from Michigan, 6'7", that worked with me, Ed Loof, and he ran my construction team. He said, I got a big team coming in. And he gets, for the second time, pancreatitis. The first time, he got air vac out. The second time, he's laying there in bed. I was like almost mad at him. I'm thinking, you're going to die on me, and I need you this week. And so I, I, I go over, I look at him, and, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to pray for you. Now, it wasn't the prayer of faith. It was the prayer, prayer, the prayer of need. I needed this guy to lead this construction team. And so I went over. I said, God, heal Ed. I left. Got out to the car. His wife, Beth, she says, hey, hey, Don, he's asking for food. Well, if you have pancreatitis, you know, you don't ever ask for food. And, and the next morning, he's checked out. His levels were higher than the first time. And pancreatitis gets worse and worse and will kill you. And, um, and he, he was so big, his shoulders were about as wide as this. No, they were wide. He couldn't fit in the, into the scanner there to even be checked out. But all his levels were so high that uh, what, later on when he went to the States, he went to visit his doctor. And, and, and he said, man, he says, you... How did you survive this? And he said, oh, my boss came in, prayed for me, and I got healed. <coughs> he said, that's what, that's what it takes, and that's what it took. Because it, it's not about a fancy, like, person. You know, I'm not a fancy person. I mean, I've got these fancy shoes on. I call them my prancing shoes. They're, those shoes are probably five years old. I've never even polished them. I wear, I wear tennis shoes. You know, I, I wear jeans and I wear a t-shirt most of my life. Being a suit, we call this a clown costume. <laughs> uh, you know, because I work with kids. But, but um, what I'm saying is I'm not a fancy person. And you don't have to be a fancy person to heal the sick. You don't have to be a, have a special three-generation Pentecostal heritage to heal the sick. I've got little kids in my church that, little kids, that have a, a healing ministry that prophesy. My grandkids teach me so much. You know, <coughs> they probably could say, uh, you want silver and gold? Look at me. I'm a kid. I don't have nothing. But my little uh, granddaughter, she was n nine at the time, and she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And my, my, her aunt, my oldest daughter, said, okay, kids, all, got all of my grandkids together and said, okay, we're going to pray and ask God to show us who we're going to pray for tonight. If the Lord shows you that person, then tonight you look for him and do the miracle that God told you he was going to do for him. And so Sophia, using her new powers, baptized the day before in the Holy Spirit, activated in the gifts now, the gift of prophecy, God had showed her who, the person she was going to pray for. And um, she looked in that service, about 500 people present, until almost midnight and then she spotted him a missionary from tonga and she looked over this boy had he had he had grown up with shoes too small because his parents were so poor he should have cut the toes out but his toes curled under to try and fit in those shoes and he's going to tonga as a as a first term missionary and and uh he was embarrassed because he's going to have to show those deformed toes in those little shoes, you have to show them uh, to the people in, in Tonga because they go barefoot and wear sandals and skirts, the guys. <laughs> and it's not a gender thing. <laughs> and so he's sitting there praying. His feet are sore. And, a li and uh, Sophia comes over. She said, God told me to pray for you. Been looking for you all night. She prayed for him. His toes grew out, flattened out, grew. 
his shoes grew. He he had he couldn't fit in his shoes. He had to buy he had to buy uh, size uh, I think thirteen and a half shoes after wearing because <laughs> his feet his toes grew so long, and uh, and he was able to go to his mission field uh, with a he, with healed feet because a little girl saw him in a prophetic vision and found him that night to give him his miracle. My little grandson, Caleb, he's, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a pistol. But he's, he, his mom got lost, and Kim, missionaries in Nicaragua, you get off the beaten track, you're lost. It, it's a dangerous place to get lost. She calls up her husband, Steve, and says, Steve, I'm lost. I don't know how to... I don't know where I'm at. He says, give me a, give me a, a marker. He says, she says, there's a Coke sign, a uh, little store. Couldn't find anything that it could give him a reference. Caleb, I think he was four at the time. He's in his car seat in the back. He said, Mom, this is serious. I need to pray really hard. In fact, I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So he just prayed real hard, began to speak in tongues, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said an angel came and rubbed his stomach, and the Holy Spirit came and rubbed his back. And he said, and, the, and, the, and when he was done praying, mom knew where she was. <laughs> oh man, his faith is activated. That little boy can prophesy. Man, he's a prophet. He, he's going to be a powerful prophet. He, he's, he, he, he believes that when he prays, he moves the hand of God. Doesn't matter that he's just a little kid. Doesn't matter. He, he's a giant. He's listening to God to coach his family. He, he, he's praying for me tonight. And I'm sure God's given him a prophetic word. I wish I had time to see what he might be telling me. But, but whatever the Lord is telling him is, is, is what's going to happen. Because the Lord uses us even if we're just a little kid. One of my groups of guardians at my church, they went out to do ministry, and they found a little kid who was born with no fingers. They decided that wasn't right. And so they decided just to pray for a little boy with no fingers. They prayed, and he grew five fingernails. They said, Five fingernails, that's not... So they prayed again, and he grew two fingers. Now, I don't know if they'd have prayed another time, and he'd grow to thir- he would have grown a third finger, I don't know, or a fourth, I don't know. They stopped at two. But, you know, you could do a lot of things with two, two fingers. Uh, it, was a, it, was an, it was enough, you know. He, uh, the little boy wasn't complaining. And those kids, oh my goodness, how, how big do you think their God is? Now they're not walking around unarmed. Now they're not walking around with religion. They're walking around with authentic relationship with God. The powerful, they have been activated. They, they, you know, I, like to, I like to say if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's like having a phone that's not connected to nothing. What good is it? If you can't make a phone call and you can't get internet, I mean, you can throw it at a, <clears throat> you can throw it at a, a monkey charging you. Or you could, you know, you could throw it at a mad dog or something. But I mean, it, 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 needs, to, it needs to be activated. And our faith needs to be activated. The gift of faith is, some, is one of the gifts of the Spirit. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit challenges us to, to, to become more than we are. Powerful in the things we say and do. The Lord challenges us to, to, to be the real thing, not a fake thing. Pentecostal, not a fake Pentecostal that's afraid of his voice, not a fake Pentecostal that can't testify and give witness. Now, I, I'm not calling you fake if you don't do that, but I, I'm just saying, if you're the real thing, you're going to taste like a Coke. If you're a real thing, there's going to be miracles, signs, and wonders that follow you everywhere you go, not because you're special, because you're spirit-empowered. Because you are, are a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is the proof. That is how we know you're real and not just someone pretending to be a Christian. Not just a convert. Not just someone who made a, deci- a decision to join a club. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's the real thing. There is no fake, no substitute. There is no counterfeit Jesus. Ever one of our staff, he was in Master's Commission, he, he went to Guatemala. And there in Guatemala, he's talking and he holds a piece of paper and he says, you know, there are, there are physical laws. And he said, when you release this paper, it falls to the ground. But he said, you know, God likes to change the laws of man by supernatural, supernaturally. He said, sometimes when, you, when the laws are in place, like when someone's sick with a, with a disease that cannot be cured, and then you should fall, you should die, you should have a problem, but the Lord, oops, I didn't catch it. Uh, the Lord intervenes and changes the natural laws. He's standing on a chair doing that, and suddenly a little boy little boy with glasses that thick that could barely see, blind, it, 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 just enough light to see around, to be able to see, even with those huge glasses, with those thick, thick glasses. He says, sir, you think God would do that for me? Eber got down off that chair and he says, I'm sure he will. Come here. Prayed for him. And that minute, his eyes were completely healed. Now he's a problem. That kid can see so good, he runs all over the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord, yes. Uh, you think God could do that for me? You know, miracles are advertisement. In the Bible, we see <clears throat> nine, uh, we see... Uh, we see the miracles of the people and we read about them that Jesus did. I want to tell you, every one of those people died of something else. They died. They got healed. Leprosy, and then they died of something else. Maybe old age, I don't know. They're not here to tell us. Healing is, healing is, is not the end product. It advertises what's coming because in our glorified bodies we will not be sick anymore and that's why healing is not so much so that believers can feel good like I'm sick and I don't want to be sick yeah the Lord can heal that but it's to advertise heaven it's to show the power of God it's it it's the commercial that says yeah you can be healed tonight of of any disease you're still gonna die and then you're going to be well. It's kind of like getting the advance. Uh, maybe out of your IRA, you know, or get an advance out of, out of, your, out of your savings. Um, because we're going to die. And that's the normal thing for every human being. There's no human being on earth, you know, 2,020 years old that was healed by Jesus and still here. But all those healed people believe in Jesus. All those people who have been impacted by the supernatural, who've had a prophetic word, who God has spoken to uh, through, <clears throat> the, through his Holy Spirit to, to, to activate their faith and to, and to do a commercial, do a little spot. We're at, we're, we were at this crusade and <clears throat> My brother Mark, he says, okay, call Master's Commission over. This lady, la last night she was healed. She was deaf. Now she, has to, she was complaining. She said, I used to sleep with my deaf ear up, she said, at night. And then the buses that come by my house make so, would make a lot of noise and I wouldn't hear it. She says, now I have nothing I can do. She says, the, the noise is so loud at night, it's keeping me awake of all the, all the buses. And we're saying like, <clears throat> listen, lady, you could, we could pray and have you get sick again if you want, but... <clears throat> she said, she said, would you pray for my, for my son? He, he, he's, he's blind in one eye because a dog scratched him when he was a little baby and his, and his, and his pupils messed up. And he, he's, the little boy sitting there. It was so funny. You'd have to be there. It was hilarious. <clears throat> so my brother, he says, hey, go call Master's Commission. Have him come over here and see this little boy while he's here. He's going to be healed right now. And so... 
I call master, hey guys, come. The little boy over here is like, he's going, uh, pastor, it's too late. <laughs> here, I'm already healed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we, we had our master's commission going out to minister to the Mosquito Coast, and <clears throat> there was this believer, <clears throat> I'm old, I don't have a cold, but I'm old. Um, I don't know, I preach many times a week, and my voice has a hard time. But, so, this woman had always been a thorn in his flesh. And she only spoke mosquito. He spoke Spanish. But she wouldn't accept Christ. She didn't. So, she had club feet. And she was mad at God. Because her feet were like turned backwards. And she's there. And she comes forward to be healed. Well, God healed her club feet. Oh boy, she wanted to get saved fast. We told her, you know, get right with God. Who knows, they might, turn, they might turn them back. So she got right with God right there, accepted Christ, was instantly baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. She'd never spoken Spanish. And everybody's listened to her speaking in tongues in Spanish, glorifying God. We sent a missionary young lady who's now in Cambodia, but we sent her to Niger. In Niger, she, was, she only had one convert in two years. This is, a, this is a lady that's a machine. She's an intercessor. God uses her to do. The people, the Muslim women would call her to come do miracles, to deliver. The, but the Muslim woman there couldn't accept Christ unless her husband accepted Christ. So they, they would just have her come and do the miracles. But one day, a man... His son was dying with malaria. And he was so embarrassed, but he loved his son. And so he told his wife, have Lydia come pray for the, my son. She said, okay, there's two conditions. Number one, I'm going to pray, but I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Is that okay with you? He said, yeah. He said, okay. Well, then... That then the second thing is that when your son is healed, you're going to accept Christ as your Savior. <laughs> Blackmail. He said, I'll do it. And he did it. And he did it. <laughs> his son was healed. Instantly his fever broke. You know, you, there, you get one cross, two cross, three cross malaria. Three cross can be fatal. The fever spikes so high. And, uh, and he was gloriously healed and and that whole family accepted Jesus Christ it took a miracle to get one convert that ground is so hard it took a miracle to have a loved one life saved for them to find Christ our children's pastor they went out with a group of kids to pray for the sick and they go to and here's this lady now the lady is like sitting in a in a in a wheelchair and and she's surrounded by people with her and so the kids come over and they 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 say what's what's wrong nobody answers they think oh they're going to make a fool out of us they're trying to they're trying to make a fool out of us and so they they started to pray and the lady is praying it really low. The minute she starts praying really low, the whole family runs away. They're really mad now. They're saying, oh. They said, lady, if you want to be healed, pray louder. She prays louder. Get out of that wheelchair. She stands up and walks around. They tell her, run. And she runs. About that time, the whole family comes back. She'd been paralyzed. <laughs> She'd been paralyzed for two years. <laughs> And she couldn't do any of it. She couldn't even speak. She'd had a stroke. <laughs> and they're mad at her. They were so humble before God after that. They, <laughs> they, <laughs> they repented. But, you know, they're just kids. I mean, they're kids with a powerful gift, kids with a great anointing, but still kids.
Let your kids be kids. They can be kids. When they're going to turn it on to do the miracles, they can do them. When they're going to turn it on and pray and hear from God, they can do it. And then, then they can run around. Run around, come back and do a miracle. Run around, <laughs> come back and give a word of prophecy. You, you don't want to try and put it in a, a box that, that, that children of the Spirit are children and they're of the Spirit. They have a full portion, not a little baby portion. Just think of them as having a giant Holy Spirit in them. <laughs> uh, they, they have an incredible anointing. My wife, she, she, the Lord has used her a number of times to do powerful miracles. One lady came to our church and she was, she was supposed to die. She, had, she was in the last stages of tuberculosis, coughing up blood. And my wife saw her there and didn't really know her, but she went and prayed for her. Now, it wasn't one of these fancy prayers where she was like the speaker. She just came up behind her, laid hands on her. The minute she did, heat went through that lady's body. She was gloriously healed. And uh, there's a lady that lived under a bridge with her kids. And God healed her. Two of her daughters have entered the ministry, credential ministers. One's a missionary in Brazil. The other's a missionary here in the U.S., that lady was healed, and she's pastoring a church now. You know, just a casual miracle, walking by miracle. Amen, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, there was another 14,700, I believe, something like that, but total... You're going to get a check to for eighty-four thousand dollars. Eighty-four. Now, everybody, stand, will you? And if you want a miracle, come to the front. And if you want to pray for someone for a miracle, now listen to me a second. I want you to tell them the miracle this money is. You told me this morning. You tell them what you prayed just recently, because I know that God spoke to me. And if he hadn't spoke to me, what he prayed for the miracle wouldn't have come to pass. And together we did that. Because I am sure, as I said here, as Pastor Jeff and I met with Don, that God spoke to me to build those classrooms and help him with this bus ministry. And I believe there's going to be more to come in. And I do believe it'll be over 100 eventually. Because next week we had... We had at least a thousand people not here this morning that wow. regularly come, that participate and love the church and love the Lord that give. Wow. And when they hear the message next week, they're going to give again, Don. And you know what that money's going to do to revolutionize what you're trying to do for God. Now, tell them what you prayed for, because this is, this is the miracle. Well, first, I've got to not cry, but two weeks ago, I wrote it in the bulletin that we were going to build these these rooms. I said, even, even the mayor doesn't like the way we're having all these little kids in the dirt. Last week, I preached on it in my church. I said, I don't know what God's going to do. We don't have a dime. But we're going to build these classrooms for these kids. And now, two weeks later, one week later from when I preached that message, part of our vision for 2020 the Lord does this miracle. I had no idea when when pastor said he was going to take up an offering. It just brought tears to my eyes and a challenge from the Lord. The Lord's telling me, pastor, to aim higher. The thing I thought was an impossible dream for 12 months is done in the first week. Today is the day. Now is the time. Uh, when, when your team comes down, I'm hoping we'll, we'll have those buildings well started, if not finished. So you can see 
uh, the kids smiling. I love going to church. I'm just a big kid, but those little kids come running, give me a big hug. I'd do anything I could for them. Thank you. Thank you for letting the Lord use you together, corporately, to do a miracle. You see, it's a miracle that goes beyond something tangible. It's a miracle because of the timing. It's a miracle because God put this on my heart. And then we weren't, I had no plans. I came to promote the team coming. If we were going to raise money, it was going to be for the project you're going to do. But God had other plans. It took winning a basketball game. Yeah. Uh, we were sitting at Hy-Vee and Pete Baylor was beating Kansas. So it was another miracle. First time in the Allen Fieldhouse. But one thing, one thing I will tell you is that originally, and you'll remember this, and, and Jerry, you were standing there too, Pastor Jeff, it's my witness. I said, is it okay if we take an offering? I said, I want to take an offering for the mission work that we're going to do, whatever the cost of the budget, and make sure anyone from our church that needs help getting there, that everyone that has a desire to go, that we're not short of funds, and then whatever we else would get, we'll just give it to you. He said, sure, whatever. So I started talking to him, and so in just a little while, Holy Spirit just spoke to me when I found out about his kids and what was going on there and those not having any rooms. And I said, no, let's, I said, how much are they? He said, 10,000, how many rooms do you need? Six, 60, 60, we can believe God for $60,000. We can do this. We're Americans, we got money. I saw our people out after they gave, they were all out eating where I went. <laughs> they still got money. <laughs> I mean, you still got money in your checking accounts. Raise your hands. There they go. They've got some more money. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. Because I know God speaks, and that's how miracles have done. And I can tell you stories of this church because God speaks, you obey, and that's it. The most powerful thing that Don has said this day to me yesterday at breakfast, he said it again this morning, is that the sin, the original sin, and this main sin that people commit is disobeying God. You hear God, you don't do what God tells you to do, disobeying God. That's why it's so important if you, God is asking you to do something big you've never done. I believe when I obey God, that Ethiopia offering, that it unleashed something in our church because we began to grow it and tell you the rest of the story. We never had to take a miracle offering to pay off that other building. Four months before the miracle offering date, it was paid off. Wow. God honors a missions loving, so in it, or a church with the hearts are so in it. Let's believe for a miracle. If you need a miracle, come on down here and listen, get, move right now. Come right now to this altar and stand here and believe God and begin to look to God. Jesus can touch you. And if you have faith to believe that, look, if I just lay my hand on somewhere, just like Jesus said by the power of the Spirit, and if you need to be touched with a baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You, let me tell you something. We don't need man to manipulate that. Okay? It was never manipulated with me. I mean the Holy Spirit from above will come down right upon you right now. So you, you pray for those that are coming and then the others of you come and, and, and you can pray where you're at but if you want to be a part of laying hands little children you believe God. Teenagers you move. Don't be shy. Come up here and pray with people. Believe God for miracles, okay? Pray for us, Don. Amen. Activate your faith right now. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, it'd be against everything I've preached if you thought that I was going to heal you. And it'd be against everything I preached if you thought I wasn't going to lay hands on you. I am. But the Lord is the one that's going to heal you. He's going to use my faith activated, your faith activated. Look at me. I'm dressed in a clown costume. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I'm just, I'm just a man just like you. But I got a big God. Hallelujah.
my God, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have right now hundreds of intercessors praying. I sent them out a SOS. I said, hey guys, I need your prayer right now. I've uh, spoken four times today, and tonight I need a miracle. So they're praying. Their faith, my faith, your faith, come together for a powerful move of God. Hallelujah.